Hello and welcome into another edition of Mountaineer Mafia. This week we'll go over uh, some of the Troy and Arkansas State games that we've had in the last two weeks and uh, talk about what went on in those games and, and what we can do to improve a little bit. Um, so first of all we had Troy, triple overtime victory, you know, what's really bad in, the, in a win, right? Uh, but there was quite a bit. Uh, we, we went into halftime with the lead. Uh, it was almost seven points, but still a lead in a close game. We thought maybe we'll open it up in the second half and really turn it on. Failed to do so. And the biggest point to make about that is it seems like failed adjustments made or not made, I guess I should say, defensively. Uh, they went to a hurry-up offense, and it seemed to just really uh, disrupt our defensive momentum. Um, and definitely the way we've been playing defensively uh, did not show up. It, it didn't look like the same defense. It didn't look like the same team overall uh, two weeks ago. But, you know, they pushed through. They pulled it off in the overtime, but it wasn't pretty. So we got the ultimate W that we needed, but not how we wanted to get it. So we, we saw some problems defensively finally and couldn't really solve this team real well. We, we didn't make the adjustments in-game. Thought maybe we could take that into next week's game against Arkansas State again. Now, this is the third game in as many days, and it's obviously going to be taking a toll on us. Yes, they're all three home games. Yes, the students are going to be there for all three, and they're going to be excited and revved up, but at some point the momentum starts to fade and you've got to dig deeper and find something more to pull through these types of games after very little rest and little preparation time. But just like the Troy game, we went in with a lead at the half. Uh, it could have been bigger lead if not for two huge turnovers. Marcus turned it over within at least the 15, maybe even inside the 10, and they turned that into points. Then Lamb gets sacked from behind, forced fumble, easily scooped up and score there again. So that's 14 points we're basically giving them on the scoreboard, uh, and that changed the, the entirety of the game. Um, it's hard to say how much because we still went in to halftime with the lead, but we definitely didn't go in with any momentum at all. Um, they came back out, and just like Troy, yet again, went to a hurry-up offense, and defensively it seemed like we still weren't making any needed adjustments to counteract what they've got. Uh, both Troy and Arkansas State had a little bit of mobile quarterbacks, uh, but these guys weren't world beaters. There are no Armonte Edwards, um, and you know there was no reason for them to be burning us as much as they did. Um, but it seemed like we couldn't key on what was coming next. It, very rarely were we getting any more sacks, any more big tackles for loss. I don't know what happened to the defense. I don't, it definitely has to do with some tired legs and definitely has to do with some key injuries. But, I mean, you, you still think the base um, good defense we've been playing all year is going to show up at some point. They're going to start getting it. They're going to start picking up reads. But that, those types of things weren't happening. And, and I don't know exactly what, what causes that, but uh, it, it wasn't going our way. The thing that I picked up on the most is defensively, as they're about to snap the ball, some of our guys are still looking to the sideline for what play is coming next. And it reminded me a lot of when Armonti and the offense used to do that years ago. And so part of that is definitely the coach is not adjusting fast enough to the play to get these guys ready defensively. So, you know, it's not just that all our guys are totally tired and, and they're not getting it. It's, it's the fact that they're not getting the necessary calls in on time to make the plays that they need to make. I think some of these guys could still be making the same plays they were making earlier in the season, but it's not happening because of play calling not being executed properly. And one more thing I'd like to point out, that the rollout with Lamb is becoming a little too predictable. Uh, we've got to mix it up a little bit more. It seems like every time he was throwing in those last two weeks, it was a rollout pass, and he's staying in the pocket very rarely. Some of that has to do with his height, I'm sure, but... Uh, you know, getting him a little comfortable outside of the pocket, which is fine, but it, it's becoming like almost every time we pass, it's a rollout, and the teams are keen on that and picking up on that. So we've got to change some things going into this week. Uh, and speaking of this week, uh, we've got Idaho now, and 
And they play inside the Kibbe Dome, which is actually our second indoor stadium this season. Uh, for those of you that know, Georgia State plays in Georgia Dome. So uh, not our first indoor atmosphere to get prepared and ready for. Uh, you know, I don't expect a crazy uh, loud atmosphere. Idaho isn't you know, a world beater when it comes to attendance, but their dome's nowhere near as big as the Georgia Dome, so it will be uh, a little bit louder and, and picked up a little bit better on, on the uh, ESPN3 broadcast. However, um, you know, it, it's across the country, so our team's going to have to prepare for that as in part of their game plan. So, uh, just a couple things to note from this game. Um, their quarterback, Lanahan, he's thrown for more yards than Lamb. So, you know, you think uh, it's a really pass-happy, pass-heavy team. And that's true, but he's not knocking any statistical barriers down in the, in the touchdown-interception ratio. I and mean, he's got 12 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. So, you know, it seems like maybe his accuracy isn't the greatest just by statistical figures there. I haven't seen Idaho play at all this year, so I, I don't really know uh, exactly what kind of quarterback he is. But statistically speaking, it seems like, he has a little bit of an accuracy problem just from touchdown to interception ratio. And their running back actually has only 30 less yards than Cox does on the season. So, you know, they still are a pretty um, balanced team overall. Uh, but the thing that's going to be really uh, in our favor here is that their wideout, their number one wideout, has been released from the team. It's a situation that reminds me a little bit of Sean Price years ago for us, just a dominant wide receiver, statistically speaking, and you know during his play on the field, um, and just couldn't stay out of trouble essentially. So uh, that's going to be huge for us. Their top target. I mean, this guy has a bunch more yards receiving than the next wide receiver on their list. Whereas our top three wideouts are all very even in yardage and it seems like we spread the ball out pretty well when we do throw. Uh, like I said, the rollout with Lamb, maybe we need to work on mixing up a little bit better than that. But as far as uh, spreading it out, we don't have a top guy that they're going to be double teaming and triple teaming at, at any time. I mean, we got a good balance as far as throwing it to uh, the tight end some, and then, you know, three to four different wide receivers can be making plays. So that, that is in our favor. Um, uh, defensively, they give up quite a few points, and so, you know, they lost to one of the worst teams, if not the worst team in our conference in New Mexico State two weeks, two weeks ago. So these types of things tend to lend me to definitely think that we'll come out of here with the victory. Uh, I, I don't know if we'll really reshow the form we had early in the season and be dominant, but hopefully we can at least start to turn that corner back to the dominant play that we've seen offensively and defensively from earlier in the season. Um, it could definitely start with this week. It has to start with this week if we want to uh, go to the best bowl possible and finish with the best record possible. Um, so I, I think we'll come out on top. I'd love to see a 20 or 30 point spread by the time this thing's over. I don't know if we'll see it, but I'm thinking that we'll be at least more than two touchdowns in victory, and I'd love to see three or more. So uh, hopefully you can return to form, and as always, go apps. See you next time.